Uh, my name is Yasser Sattar, uh, MD, uh, medical doctor at Mount Sinai Health System. Um, I'm currently a resident and an independent researcher, and I'm also a residency match guidance physician at uh, US Seventy Sonti also, and I have a couple of affiliations affiliated with King's County Hospital as a research assistant, and I have good experience in academic research and clinical research department. So today's lecture is about like how you can make a case report and how you can make it a poster presentation and present at a national conference as this is one of the mandatory requirements for the candidates applying for the residency process in order to get the good training in U.S. Um, hospitals. So um, before I will start our session, I will uh, introduce about Solars also about on my behalf. Like I just recently joined Solars College. It's a uh, it's a great board through which an applicant can learn about the research and also applicants who are unable to get matched. Uh, we have a lot of certifications uh, in which they can enroll and still they're able to attain very very good jobs. Uh, which are very, very um, competitive uh, jobs with good salaries. So we will explain that also uh, at the end. So, um, so, so we'll Dr. Dr. Sutter, maybe I should jump in for a moment and just explain some of that? Okay, yes, yeah, sir. So, yeah, thank you. So my name is Marcy McFadden. I'm with Sollers College in our career services group. And I wanted to just give you a quick overview of the paths that we have that typically will help folks with uh, foreign educations, particularly in the medical or life sciences field, make a transition into the job market in the U.S. Um, because of the medical training and the scientific background, there are a couple of paths that are very, very strong career paths for folks with those backgrounds. Um, we have drug safety and pharmacovigilance, and we also have clinical trial management. Both of those paths are accredited programs. Um, the credits are transferable, and they both offer in-house internships. Those internships give you hands-on experience in those fields, and coming out of those certificate programs, you can either matriculate into a master's program, or you can go right into the job market um, for pretty well-paying jobs with strong career paths, both in drug safety and in clinical research. Um, so at Solars, we offer those paths. Admissions would always be able to help you figure out, uh, you know, what the right path is for you. But um, just letting you know that that's available through Solars with the medical and scientific backgrounds for foreign educated folks. If there are questions, I'm sure that we can do some follow-up later on. But um, but that's uh, all I wanted to share, and I'm gonna I'm gonna pass it back over to Dr. Sutter. So thank you. Uh, thank, thank you for a great introduction about the solars. Uh, like I said, it's it's a great model through which an applicant can make their CV very easy. Also, to get a chance to talk in the healthcare system. So today we're gonna start with the basics of the BC. Uh, I know most of you folks uh, don't know the basics. So I will try to make it as simple as I can. And I know it's a, it's a big topic, so I'll try to cover uh, it very, very quickly. So if you have any questions, you can ask me at the end of the session. And also, more, I would like I want everyone uh, to mute their mic so that everyone can listen to me very, very carefully. So thank you. I appreciate your collaboration. So let's just start. So. Can you move to the first slide? Okay, so um, can uh, can everyone can hear me fine? Okay. Yes, we so, can hear you, sir. Okay. Okay, that's good. So um, today uh, I will start with the first slide. There are a lot of different types of research. Uh, first is we have a test tube research in vitro, which people do in, um, in uh, clinical um, chemistry labs. And next we have like animal models, um, which is 
the research which we do on animals and in order to find something linked with the humans. Um, and next we have, in, in a bit of it, we have ideas and editorials and opinions, which are kind of like a base of all the clinical research. It's, it's, it's better to have something on board rather not to have anything uh, about the research. So it's kind of like a basics to start with. So, and above editorials, in case of clinical strength of the research, we have case reports. Now, case reports, it's a, it's a great model uh, to publish something on a, on a journal, especially the case journal, um, because this way you will attain a publication also, which you can show your residency programs. And also you're bringing awareness to different positions uh, in order to educate, in order to educate the community. Uh, kindly, kindly, please uh, mute your mic, everyone. Thank you. So, so next above the case reports, we have case series. Case series is basically we are we are having like two or four same cases, and can write both cases in the same manuscript. So this is what we call the case series. And next we have the cohort and a case control study, which are kind of like uh, retrospective studies and prospective studies in which we kind of like take the participants, we take the controls, and then we follow for a couple of years. We can go back and we can go in the future also to follow them. So, and upon that, the, most, the best study, I will say, uh, the best study with strong clinical strength. These are randomized clinical trials, which obviously need a lot of funding. And at your level, mostly uh, if you were a medical graduate or some of you are medical students, you don't have a lot of fun fundings from NAS. So in that case, like you cannot do randomized clinical trials because it, it needs a lot of a lot of patient population. So, but what you can do is you can do a systematic review and meta-analysis. So I will gui guide you about those one at the end of the session. So today our topic of discussion is how to write a case report and how to convert a case report into the posters. Okay, move to the next slide, please. Okay, so before I start, uh, I would like to say like, in, in order to get a good grip on your writing skills and in order to perform well in writing manuscripts, uh, I want you to guys read and read more and more manuscripts. Because like with, with, uh, with more reading, you will develop your own writing skills from reading a lot of different authors. Each author have their own writing skills, okay? So before you start writing, you develop an outline and ask yourself different questions and try to come up with an answer as this outline will, uh, will make your manuscript uh, very organized, okay? So first outline is what is the topic of your research? What is the topic? So if you came across any, uh, any case, what is, what is the topic? What can be a catchy or interesting topic? Uh, to educate the physicians. Okay, why do you think this topic is important? What's, what's the uniqueness of this topic? What, uh, what is the hypothesis? How could, it, how could you formulate a hypothesis out of it? And next, you can say what are the results? What is the benefit of this research? What is the major finding? What is the, what is the strong clinical finding in your case report or any research? Okay, so these are just basic questions. I will I will just highlight, and after that, we're gonna have uh, didactics of how to write case reports. Okay, move to the next one. So next is for introduction section. So why is your research important? Like, what's the what's the benefit of your research? Why do you think it's very really important to develop that kind of awareness? Here you should you should put some light about like, okay, you have to add some prevalence of that disease uh, in, in your script also. For example, like, 
Frederick say that here is kind of like one in 500,000 people in the United States. So it's kind of like a prevalent disease, although it's a rare disease, but, uh, but the incidence and the prevalence is going up. So what is known about the topic? Give a little bit background about the topic. For example, okay, um, this drug, for example, valproic acid was diagnosed, uh, was, was, was uh, manufactured in the market in kind of like 1960 uh, due to the diagnosis of epileptic seizures. So, so give a little bit background, historical background, okay, in your intro section of your research. So next is what are the hypotheses, what are your objectives? Like here you should add, okay, my objective is to present this case report and once I present this, physicians will get awareness about these, these, these symptoms, okay? So move to the next one. Okay, next is the outline two. Uh, here uh, we have uh, materials and methods. So what are the methods you have used? Like, have you used um, uh, humans uh, for, as, a, as your follow-ups? Uh, and what is, the, what is the study design? Like, have you uh, reviewed literature? Have you uh, performed a study on like uh, active questionnaires? Um, so these are the basic things in the materials and methods. Or have you just got a data online from reviewing literature from PubMed or Google Scholar or PsycInfo or any, any online database? Okay, move to the next one. Okay, next is the outline two. Uh, this includes results. What are your most significant results? What is the, what is the unique point? What, what is the point you think uh, that is kind of like the extracted juice or summary? Okay, next. So next, at the end of uh, every script, we have a discussions and conclusions what are the study's major findings, okay? So what is the study major finding? What is the significance of this study? What are the implications? How it's going to help the healthcare system, okay? Next. Now these are the, these are the main slides for today's discussion. Case reports are usually around like 1,500 words or more. Okay, and, and the other thing is you should know what are the things that you can present as a case report, okay? So case report can be a common drug with the rare side effects. It can be common, it can be common diagnostic modalities or it can be rare presentation of the diseases. It can be unexpected presentation of the common disease. It can be unexpected association between the disease and the symptoms, or it can be new pathogenesis, okay? So for example, if we talk about any drug, uh, for example, like B12, you know, the B12 usually uh, don't cause anaphylaxis, but in rare instances, it can cause anaphylaxis. So you have to come up with something that is kind of like a rare occurrences and that is giving some benefit to the healthcare community in order to bring awareness. Next. So, so the way to outline your case report is you have abstract, you have introduction or background, you have case presentation, you have discussions, you have conclusions and references. Okay. Next. So, so we, we are starting with the introduction part. It is very good idea to start with the introduction and then write abstract at the end of your script writing. So, um, because by, by the end, you, you get a good idea about how to write abstract. So number first point in the, in, in the introduction, it should, be, it should be short and concise. It should be quick introduction. Uh, it should include prevalence of the disease or it should uh, include like common presentations and it should include side effects if you are writing a script about the drugs, for example. And if you're writing a script about the drug, then mention rare side effects or mention rare presentation and give an outline, very, very short outline about the case. Okay, below we have presented a case 
that have presented with this rare side effect due to this medication. Okay, next. Okay, so I'm going to give you an example of introduction also by using this sample. Okay, so um, for example, the topic name of this research is lumbar artery pseudoaneurysm following renal biopsy. So basically, after biopsy, patient is having pseudoaneurysm, okay, which is a false aneurysm. So how I'm going to write introduction of that paper, okay? This is very, very important stuff. So, so the way we are organizing this stuff is first write down about the renal biopsy, okay? Okay, so the percutaneous renal biopsy is routinely performed by nephrologists and interventional radiologists to diagnose various types of renal diseases. So the first two lines are about what are the what are the uses of renal biopsy, okay? So it is, and next is it is considered safe. So next is we are saying it is safe with some common side effects, um, with, with the low risk of complications, especially with adjunctive use of image guidance, okay? So basically we are saying with the image, there is low risk of complications. And next is um, we have like um, hematuria or blood in the collecting system, parenchymal or perinephric hematomas, pseudoaneurysm, AV fistulas are examples of such complications that have been widely reported. So you can see fistulas or you can see intrarenal pseudoaneurysms but it is very, very rare to see the artery pseudoaneurysm. And then after mentioning the common side effects or common issues, the author have written lumbar artery pseudoaneurysm following a renal biopsy or a particularly rare occurrences. Okay, so, and, and the last points are, okay, below we have described a case of 71 year old man who developed a massive retroperitoneal hematoma due to pseudoaneurysm if his second right L2 artery following a renal biopsy that was subsequently managed with endovascular coil embolization. So very, very short uh, intro about the patient and what happened to the patient and what we did. Okay, move to the next. Okay, so after writing intro section, we write case presentation. And before I move to the case presentation, so let me tell you in intro, we add references also. Usually we add kind of like three or five references, okay? Uh, some of the journals, they allow only 10 references in the case reports. Some allow 20 references in the case report, okay? So it, it varies from uh, journal to journal. So next is a case presentation. Now the case presentation is basically what happened to the patient. So here in this section, you're writing about the patient. What happened to the patient, how the patient presented, and how did you manage the patient? What are the laboratories? What are the imaging findings? So you have to write up all of these things in a good flow. Okay, so it should be short and concise. That's very important. It is good to add clinical images such as X-ray, CT, or MRI and you can add tables or you can make tables uh, by using the laboratory results. Next thing is um, please make sure you're not including the patient name, do not include patient address, do not include the hospital name, hospital address, do not include complete date of the visit as, as these things will break patient confidentiality. It is very, very important to hold the confidential stuff. So next thing is read case presentation in different case reports and then try to learn like how other authors have organized their stuff. This is the best way. Next. So again, I'm giving you an example uh, of the same topic, lumbar artery pseudoaneurysm following a renal biopsy. Uh, look, at, look at the way this author have organized the stuff. 71-year-old uh, male patient, an ex-smoker underwent a right-sided renal biopsy for an acute kidney injury and the derangement of the renal function. So CRET is 8.1, BUN is 74, 
the derangement of renal function was believed to be secondary to vasculitis. Okay, so we we thought that this patient has vasculitis, and that's why creatinine and bun are up. Okay, that makes sense, and the P and K were positive, and uh, chrysanteric glomerulonephritis were suspected. Post procedure, like so, that's why we did we did a renal biopsy because renal biopsy is the most accurate test in the renal issues, especially in the vasculitis or any nephritic or nephrotic syndromes. Okay, so post procedure, the patient became hemodynamically unstable within the first 24 hours. So after 24 hours, patient became hemodynamically unstable and dropped three points of hemoglobin. So the hemoglobin dropped from 10.7 to 6.5 in this patient. Coagulation profile was normal. There is no coagulation issue, no PT issue, no PTT, no bleeding time uh, is prolonged, no plate, platelet count issues, okay? So the patient had a contrast enhanced CT. So we did a CT angiogram and that showed that there was a hematoma uh, in the right posterior lumbar and iliac fossa region, which was separate from the lower pole. Okay, so move to the next. So the hematoma was measuring 11 centimeter in the cranial caudal dimensions. Okay, so here the author is telling you about the imaging findings and then author will put the image. For example, like we will put the image of, um, of CTA, CT angiogram, okay? Next is uh, conventional angiography was performed, right? So after we have made the diagnosis, then we are doing some intervention to fix that patient because this is a rare issue which we have seen. So an initial abdominal angiogram was performed via common femoral arterial approach. Catheterization was performed. And then we put an embolus to treat this patient. This is kind of like in intervention, okay? This is a part of interventional uh, radiology um, and vascular interventions, okay? So that's how we fixed this aneurysm and we fixed this hemorrhage, okay? Move to the next one. And then at the end, we are saying um, in our case presentation section, a selective renal angiogram was performed again and then post embolization, there was no bleeding. So we are telling a community that we have fixed the issue and that's how we have fixed the issue by doing embolization. Move to the next one. Next, uh, next, is, the, next is the discussion sections, okay? Now this section is also very important. Um, it, it start with the basic one line intro of the disease again it, it's not an issue if you are using the same intro which you have used in the intro or background section. The first line of the intro and the back, background or discussion can be same. Okay, it's totally fine. And next is it, it should be 800 to 1000 words, not more than that. Okay, um, please make sure your case reports are not kind of like 3000 or 4000 words. Um, next is uh, it is better to sit back and make an outline of this discussion section. For example, if, if this is a disease, then um, write down the basic background of the disease, then write down the prevalence of the disease, then write down uh, pathophysiology of the disease, write down common presentation of the disease and rare presentation of the disease. For example, our patient had a rare presentation. So that's how you make your discussion section. And after the rare presentation, you mentioned the treatment of the disease, okay? Uh, and, and before treatment, you can uh, you can add diagnostic modalities. So you have to make an outline and then write accordingly. And then you have to add references, whatever you write, okay? So, um, so it is also very imperative to add at least one randomized clinical trial or review article finding in your discussion section of your case report as this will strengthen your clinical findings, okay? So next is, uh, at the end, you can close with the treatment uh, by, uh, by adding some reference. You can move to the next one. So let's just look at this uh, discussion example. So we have a lumbar artery pseudoaneurysm following renal biopsy. Um, so here, basically, the author uh, have organized the stuff in a way 
um, a percutaneous renal biopsy is relatively safe. So the author is saying, okay, this procedure is relatively safe. Um, hematomas are most commonly reported issue uh, with this, but mostly it's self-limited. First 24 hours, uh, it's a critical observation. And uh, after that, like, Patients can have multiple side effects, fistulas, blah, 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 colonic and injuries, uh, infections, pneumothorax, okay, and, and author is adding the references also. The stuff which you see in the brackets, parentheses, first and second, th these are the references, okay? Move to the next one. So next you can see um, here the author have mentioned a lumbar artery pseudoaneurysm is a rare complication that have been previously described. Uh, this is kind of like a short part about the pseudoaneurysm, then what we should do in that aneurysm, what is the prevalence of that aneurysm, where does it originate from, so we, we can write all of these things, and then how we can fix the, the aneurysm. And uh, and it, it is totally fine to add randomized clinical trial here in this section stating that, okay, there was a study um, in which they have enrolled like 1,000 patients and they performed a renal biopsy uh, and uh, maybe like 50 patients developed pseudoaneurysm in that many days. So it is totally fine to add that information here to strengthen your clinical information. Move to the next one. Okay, so uh, next one is uh, is also at the end. You can mention uh, how you have treated uh, treated the patient. Like if if there is an issue of pseudo aneurysm following a renal biopsy, how you have fixed that issue. And again, you have to add references here also. Move to the next one. Okay, so again, here the author have mentioned which artery we are embolizing. So these are all sections of the treatment in discussions. Move to the next one. So next, there uh, there is a conclusion. So again, so uh, it will be very short and concise. It will be 200 to 300 words. It's a quick summary and it concludes about your findings read conclusion of different authors and try to come up your own. Move to the next one. So here the, uh, here the main conclusion the author have written uh, in summary vascular complications related to the renal biopsy mostly involve the native kidney stem cells and are usually self-limited. A lumbar artery pseudoaneurysm following a percutaneous renal procedure is an unusual complication and may present as a major diagnostic and therapeutic challenge. Okay, coil embolization supplement with gel foam pledges is a safe and effective method of controlling the bleeding and eliminating the pseudoaneurysm. Special attention must be given to the anatomical and technical branches, and it is totally fine at the end you're closing with something like uh, 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 more research should be done in future about this, 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 about uh, about the safe zone of um, of renal biopsy. Like for how long we have to observe the patient after doing a renal biopsy. Okay, move to the next one. And then the uh, the referencing, which is a tricky part for the beginners. Um, so let me make it very easy for you. Uh, there is a software called EndNote, uh, which you can which you can buy online. Uh, it's very easy to use. And if if you don't know how to use EndNote, there are a lot of training sessions on the YouTube, or you can get direct training from the EndNote company. So this is one of the simplest way to add the references. All you have to do is just download the citation and then click the insert citation button and the software will automatically insert the citation in whatever format you need. For example, there are a lot of, uh, a lot of different styles of referencing. There is an APA, there is an MLA, there is an Oxford, Harvard, and Chicago style. And there are a lot of other styles also based on journal, whatever journal you're submitting your research at. 
So um, move to the next one. So, so for example, let's talk about this research uh, example. Uh, for example, the paper which I have shown you as an example in this video lecture is uh, is about the lumbar artery pseudo aneurysm. Okay, so the way if you want to make a reference by uh, manually. So what you can do is like you will take the author's last name and then put the first word of author's first name and then put a comma and then put the second author in the same way like the last name in the beginning and the first word of the first name and then after that you write after that you can write date like it, it depends on the on the journals especially uh, but but after that you usually write the title of your research lumbar artery pseudo aneurysm following a biopsy and then it's a journal name curious it's a journal then after that it's a it's a volume with the edition okay so 10 and 5 this is the volume and the what edition of the volume is and e2634 is is usually uh, kind of like a publication uh, pages and then we have DOI which is an index of the article because once you click that index it will take you to that article so that how um, you can manually make the reference and if you don't have if you don't know how to manually make reference there is another easy way uh, easybib.com you can save this website it's E A S Y B I B easybib.com and uh, online they will create a references for you in whatever format you need. Okay, move to the next one. So, uh, okay, so last but not the least is it's abstract, which is one of the tricky things for the for the author, especially while writing a script. And I believe uh, most the authors usually write abstract at the end of their script although it's on the top of your script but you write it at the end of your script writing so it should be uh, around like 300 to 500 there are a couple of rules of writing an abstract do not use uh, do not use short words in the abstracts for example if you are writing about the valproic acid do not use a VA in your abstract don't use abbreviations in your abstract it, it's it's not acceptable okay next is abstract is just an extracted juice of all the script so the way to write an abstract can like read more and more research publications and then you will you'll get an idea how to write an abstract move to the next one Okay, so let's just see your example one more time. Lumbar artery pseudo aneurysm following a renal biopsy. How we have written the abstract. So lumbar artery pseudo aneurysm have been have previously been described as a rare iatrogenic complication um, following percutaneous interventional procedures involving the flanks. We describe a case of 71-year-old man who became unstable and dropped 3 grams of hemoglobin within 24 hours. A post-biopsy hemorrhage was suspected and pseudoaneurysm of his second right number artery was found on the CTA. Successful coil embolization was performed in the right L2 artery. This case discusses the diagnostic and therapeutic challenges of this unusual complication as well as anatomical and technical factors involved in the embolization of the lumbar arteries. Okay, so this is kind of like a summary of whatever we have written because mostly uh, having like a very busy schedule in the clinical medicine, uh, all you can do is just quickly read the abstract. So you sometimes you don't have time to read full articles so abstract should be kind of like juicy content of whatever you have in your script okay, move to the next one okay so um okay so i hope that makes sense uh, so 
I will share my screen here to show you a couple of more examples about case report writing, and then we will move to um, then we will move to poster presentation section. Give me just one second. Uh, what you can do is like go to the journal and then um, click all types and then click the case reports, okay? Then click filter. So after filtering, you can see like there there are, there are a lot of a lot of case reports. So look at this one. Let's just talk about the drug uh, case report about the drug, okay? So look at look at the way the author have organized the stuff about the introduction it's kind of like very short right so first you are writing about the cyclophosphamide okay what are the what are the benefits of cyclophosphamide and what are the uses of cyclophosphamide and what are the side effects of cyclophosphamide and what is the rare side effect okay so you can see here cardiotoxicity has been reported to be due to the higher dose of cyclophosphamide in this case in which patient experienced adverse cardiac event after receiving a single dose. So just imagine like we know that cyclophosphamide can cause hemorrhagic cystitis, but it can cause cardiotoxicity also. That's a rare side effect. That's a case report, okay? Whenever you are doing any observership, externship, clinical research in any hospital, you come across a lot of different cases on which you can write a case reports like that, and you can be a published author, okay? So look at this next stuff. The author have kind of like written everything about the about the patient, especially how does a patient present it, uh, what are the physical findings, uh, what are the labs here. Author have mentioned the labs. What are the images? Okay, then author have uh, mentioned a scoring system, kind of like shared score. That's what we do. And then the author have mentioned uh, um, EKG findings. Okay, along with the EKG image. And then at the end, like, how did you manage that case, okay? So look at this one. Patient was transferred to the floor after weaning off rib and blah, blah, blah. So basically, we are saying, like, okay, let's suppose someone have a cardiotoxicity due to the cyclophosphamide. How do you treat that? Will you stop cyclophosphamide? Will you add any medication to fix that? What is your next step? Okay, so that's what you're writing basically in these two paragraphs. And then discussion section, one more time, you are giving a short intro of the cyclophosphamide and what are the different complications of cyclophosphamide and what is the mechanism of action and if there is a mechanism available like how it causes cardiotoxicity, then you write that. And then what are the risk factors that can put the patients who are taking cyclophosphamide uh, at risk of getting them cardiotoxicity, okay? Then how does a cardiotoxicity present? How can you detect that cardiotoxicity? And how you can treat that cardiotoxicity? And at the end, conclusions will be very short again, like, okay, uh, cardiotoxicity can be devastating from cyclophosphamide, and uh, it can be progressive, uh, you know, and, and dose adjustment should be implemented, so. And, so let, let's just focus on the abstract right now. So look at the abstract. Cyclophosphamide, known as uh, cytophosphane, is a medication used for chemotherapeutic agent and immune, immune suppressor. It's a com common side effects of nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, bone marrow suppression, cystitis, alopecia, blah, blah, blah. Cardiac toxicity is not common, and it's, it, it is something serious, right? So next is in this review, we are presenting a case that develops rapid ventricular rate after a single dose of cyclophosphamide. And how did we fix it? Okay. So that that is a that is a one example of um, drug uh, drug induced rare side effect. So so I have mentioned like a procedure induced rare side effect case report and a drug-induced rear side effect case report. And now it's your job to scroll through different articles and see how do you write up the disease, rare presentation of different diseases, right? So you will find a couple of case reports I wanted to read, and this will give you an idea like how to, uh, 
be better in, in your writing skills. So we've written your case reports. Uh, give me one second. So there, there's some text. So, okay. Okay. So um, so so solars. Uh, kindly, can you help the applicants also? It's like they're they're sending messages in the chat box. So that's very very important stuff. You know that once you have written a case report, there are multiple benefits. One benefit is, one benefit is like you are becoming a published author on a PubMed, which you can mention in your Airbus CVs and uh, when you're applying for the residency. And next benefit is you can present the same case report at the national meetings. Okay, and uh, we have national meetings almost like every month throughout the country so it depends on your field whatever field you're applying for your residency okay so here the poster presentation there are some basic rules um whatever conferences you're going to attend for example you're attending acp american college of physician conferences for internal medicine you have to um like if you're aiming to apply for acp you have to apply kind of like a six or eight months before their meeting and you have to submit your poster kind of like six months before the actual meeting they don't accept posters at the last minute okay so and and i will give you a couple of templates of how to make poster and how to organize poster okay and and again every meeting has their own rules like the the, uh, for example, like APA, we're going to have their own rules of posters and we're going to have their separate size of posters. So, so go to the national meetings and see what are their rules for poster submission and then create a poster and send it for submission. Maybe it will get accepted and you will present in front of a lot of program directors and chairmen and attending physicians. So that will be very helpful when you apply for the residency spot. Okay, so uh, poster presentation should include title. It should include learning objective. It should include abstract. It should include case presentation. It should include imaging or tables or short discussion, conclusion, and the references. Now, this is something very important. You cannot put like a 20 references in a, in a poster because you need a lot of space to put 20 references in a poster. Normally, poster have only five or 10 references. So like I said, you can make case report into the poster, but you have to put new references for that. Okay, so move to the next slide. So this this is a poster template from University of Alabama, uh, Alabama right? So this uh, look at the look at the top header have topic name. Then we have a subheader which is the subheading, um, and then we have author name. And then you will put your title which is MD. And then you put author second author name. Then you put your title again. Then look at the top right corner box that have a medical college logo. You're gonna put your medical college logo. And the top left box usually have the hospital logo. For example, if you're not doing residency, then this can be hospital logo where you're doing your externship. Or this can be hospital logo where you are doing your observership. Or if you're not affiliated with any institution, you can use your medical college logo on either side. It's totally fine and acceptable. Okay, so look at look at this type of template. We have a learning objective where you will put one line of learning objective only. Look at, then we have a case presentation. Then the author have mentioned uh, a small table. Uh, then we have a logarithm. Then we have workup results. Then we have selected references and look at the author I mentioned kind of like a seven or eight references like you cannot put like 20 references on one poster. Okay, and then you will print that poster. Now, 
again i will receive a lot of uh, again i will receive a lot of questions that how we can print poster it's not your job like it's there are a lot of publishing companies for example if you're going to apa maybe they will give you some publishing company you will send them a pdf uh, poster and they will publish it for you or sometimes you have to you have to publish it on your own so you have to google it and see what are the different publishing companies available for poster publications okay kindly can you please open the um, uh, templates for posters so i'm giving you a lot of templates from grand rapids michigan state university msu i'm giving you templates from university of alabama so every institution have their own templates so once you go to their website you'll find a lot of uh, different templates okay look at this type of template um okay uh, kindly can you please make it a little bit bigger yeah thanks yeah that's that's fine so um okay so look at the next template from university of alabama so look at this one uh so the top uh, so the top header have uh, have a name uh, title and the next is a subheader then we have a doctor's name and their titles and then the corner there is a medical school logo and then you have a re uh, the, uh, your residency based hospital logo or university hospital logo which is UAB right so then we have this type of style is learning objective patient presentation evaluation intro clinical features diagnosis treatment take home points and references okay move to the move to the next template look at this next template such a wonderful template like uh, we have objectives we have overview we have uh, you can make a triad uh, you can make diagnosis section separate you can make treatment section take home points okay it's it is very very good uh thing to add take home points in your poster presentation because normally like the physicians uh which are at like at these national conferences they're like super busy and uh, they they want to look at every poster but they they can't read all of the poster so they will read only take home points so it is very very imperative to add these take home points move to the next template please okay so next template is again from university of alabama medicine so you can see uh, we have a title we have a subheader uh, and then we have a medical college name or residency hospital name and then again this is pretty much same we have a learning objective patient presentation we have diagnosis we have treatment we have uh, we have medication look at this one uh you can make a medication section separate and then we have take home points and then we have a references okay move to the next template okay so so this is the next template from university of alabama so you can see here uh one more time it's pretty much same top right corner it's uh it's medical college name top left there is a there is a university name then the then the header then we have a subheader or if you don't have a subheader it's totally fine to just include the header okay and then there are their doctor's name then we have learning objectives we have intro we have patient presentation we have initial workup we have uh we have labs we have drug induced uh, so you have to make your own temp uh, uh, like you have to organize your uh, your case report into these templates okay so next we have take home points okay but please don't miss take home points in your in your posters okay next template please okay so um so again um so move to the move to the next slide please okay so i have included the references from wh where we have gathered uh, this information also if you guys need these references we'll be more than happy to send you these references um 
Uh, and and one thing I want to highlight is I do not have any affiliation with the Michigan State University of, or University of Alabama or uh, any of these institutes. It's the whole purpose of this lecture is to guide you and develop awareness how to write case reports and how to uh, present it in a poster. Move to the next one, please. So, um, so that was pretty much it for today. I would like to thank you um, to, to be part uh, of SOLARS. And uh, we are launching a new program at SOLARS about academic research and, and the head of that program. Uh, basically, this program is, uh, is for the applicants who are applying for the residency. Uh, applicants uh, will receive lectures every week and we are going to help them in order to write scripts. And this way, they will be able to publish something on a PubMed online, which will help them for the, for the residency application, as you all have to apply for, uh, for uh, on 15th of September. So I wish you good luck in your future endeavors. And if you have any question, you can contact the customer support. Thank you. If you're attending a strict, like best thing is like attending should get consent, but you can get consent from your patient too, because this is just used for educational perspective. Okay, okay. But if we, and, if we can't, then it's okay also, right? Like if I'm yeah, not. Yeah, that's, that's totally fine as long as you're not breaking uh, patient confidentiality. You're not using anything. For example, like you're not using patient's pictures so how I'm going to recognize that patient, okay, um, like the patient which you're telling me that he uh, or she is the same patient. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. A any other questions? Okay, basically, casual, they don't have time to write up. Uh, but if you are writing and once you have finished your manuscript and then you are uh, you are showing to your attending, uh, it, it's a good idea. I'm like there's 90% chance that that attending will be on board also, and he will say, uh, "I would like to be part of of your project," or uh, or you don't have to kind of like request him. Okay, I've written about this patient. I will be more than happy if you. Part of my project. Okay. You don't have to say that, okay, I've seen that case because you were in a different country or whatever the reason is. Uh, but you can say that you have assisted in that case by writing a dis discussion section or by making some tables for, uh, for the corresponding author. Okay, okay, fine. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other question? just uh, let us know so uh, and if you have questions about our programs uh, we have a lot of different certifications uh, drug safety certifications we have uh, this academic research certifications all of these certifications are very very helpful for your match process or for your jobs also in order to get a very very good jobs um, in, in US healthcare system and in drug companies or uh, or it's it's extremely beneficial to switch from a drug company to a residency spot also. Okay, if you have any questions about the program, so uh, reach reach the admission sections. And if you have any question about this uh, today's lecture, feel free to send uh, send me a message or email. Okay. So we we will stop here for a lot of solars. Have a good day.